welcome to this tutorial on how to use BPR filters inside of ZBrush to composite your model for portfolio ready concepts. First, I would like to thank the team at Pixelogic for showing me this technique inside of ZBrush. In this tutorial, I will walk you through how to set up your BPR filters and explain how to use matcap materials to composite your model inside of ZBrush. I will then show you how to create a turntable using the new render settings created with the BPR filters. Throughout this video, I will explain my thoughts on BPR filters and compositing inside of ZBrush. If you enjoy these tutorials, then please like, share and subscribe to my channel for more content in the future. So if you're ready, let's jump straight into ZBrush and look at rendering using BPR filters. So inside of ZBrush, we're going to be looking at how to use BPR filters to render out a render out your model um, that you've created with textures uh, inside of ZBrush. Um, the BPR filters can be found in the render tab, which I have been which I have docked uh, to the left, as well as the light tab. Um, I've also added a um, a quick save view of my model so I can jump back to the the view that I had uh, relatively quickly and without having to refocus the camera on my on my model um, so coming over here I have a, a basic light setup with a basic shadow uh, setup as well um, which I'm going to just add some angle to the light to the shadow uh, and that's all I'm going to do for now I don't want to be messing around with any of the other properties inside of the render properties uh, because we are not ready yet to uh, approach those um, so uh, once we are ready we will we will take a look into those later uh, the skin the material tab uh, I have a skin shader uh, applied to my model um, I haven't filled the model with the material. I have only applied the skin material here in the material tab. So uh, I can still turn off the color information and swap out my model's uh, text uh, material with any of the ones inside my material tab. So if I just go back to skin shade 04 and turn on the materials. As you can see there, I have my material back and my shaders and the skin back, sorry, uh, textures back. So first things first, we want to uh, press the BPR render button and just let that render out and see how it looks. That's going to look fine. Um, so I'll just grab that view back. Uh, that will work fine for what we have to do next. So in the BPR filters, what we want to do is come down to F1, which is filter number one. Bearing in mind, you're only going to be able to use 12 filters uh, in the program. So when we start doing this, you'll find there is a limitation to how many, how many uh, filters you could use for the BPR filters. Um, filters uh, allow us to add uh, kind of like adjustment layers or um, adjustments uh, which you would find in Photoshop um, to, to our model inside of ZBrush before taking it into Photoshop. If you've uh, seen any of my other videos on Photoshop compositing, uh, you will find this relatively easy and straightforward to follow along follow along with if you haven't i suggest uh you probably want to look into those before continuing on uh, with this tutorial because this tutorial i'll be using some of the same uh, language that i would use in my photoshop uh, tutorials uh, this um, method of rendering was uh, shown to me by the people at ZBrush and I just want to thank them for uh, showing me how to render my model 
inside of ZBrush without having to composite it later uh, inside of Photoshop and giving me more um, freedom to choose the camera angle that I want using BPR filter. Um, but I'll get into that a little later and I'll, I'll explain to you why uh, this method is good for uh, rendering your model quickly and getting a character sheet uh, rendered out of your model uh, fast. So uh, here we go. Um, so first things first, I'm going to click on the little circle under filter one. And uh, what we want to do is we just want to activate it by clicking on it. And what happens is it'll come up with the filter type. And inside the filter type, if you click on there, you're going to find um, different types of uh, filters. Uh, what we want is to use the material shading. Uh, we'll get into these other ones a little later. Uh, so the material shading one. And what we want to do is go to the modifiers. Click on override shadow and override mesh color. And come down to this texture uh, button. And select the first material, matcap material. Uh, you won't see anything until you um, press the BPR button on the top right. But what we want to do first is just copy that uh, filter, uh, F1, for later. And then come over to BPR, hit the BPR button, and just wait for it to render out. As you can see now, uh, we have F1 on, on, and off. And what we can do here is, just like in Photoshop, we can come over here and we can uh, use an overlay or a soft light. I'm going to go with overlay. And the intensity is a bit too much, so... Uh, the opacity and the material shading work just like in uh, Photoshop for the fill and the opacity layer. So, um, on the on the on the layer. So we want to bring down the material shading, which acts like the fill and the opacity as well. These modifiers react differently to your mod to the model. So selecting these will give you a different. Uh, outcome you want override uh, mesh color for for it to work uh, once we're happy with this one then we can uh, go over to the filter type 2 or filter number 2 and simply just put just press paste and that will give us the previous um, setup for the uh, filter and uh, what we can do is just click on the image again come over to the matcap skeleton Select this matte cap skeleton and using the layer again, the type of layer it is, we can uh, choose one that will fit uh, good with our model. I think it would be this one luminosity. Uh, what we want to do now is just bring down the opacity and the shader again, like I would do inside of Photoshop uh, when working with shaders uh, with the uh, different exported matte caps from ZBrush. Uh, coming over to filter number three, we can just paste again, come down to the image, and we want to choose the frame 01, which will give us our cavity map. And we can replace that with a an add or a overlay or multiply depending on what you want out of it multiply is going to give us those dark edges those dark crevices inside our model like so bring the opacity the material shaded down a bit and you can always check to see how they work by switching the switch on and off uh, to see how it affects your model uh, we might want to change the multiply to a different 
layer like overlay and then bring down the shader and bring down the opacity of that coming over to filter number four I'm just going to paste again and in this one we're going to choose a different material and we're going to go for the reflection map this is going to give us some of those fake reflections that we would use inside of Photoshop normally um, using the hard light or the linear light or sorry not the linear light the pin light or the screen or hard light depending on what sort of mood you want your character to come out in uh, so I'm going to go with the hard light and just bring down the opacity again uh, coming over to filter number five I'm just going to paste again and then come over here and choose another mat cap I'm going to try, try out this uh, not this one, sorry, um, pearl, I'm going to add this as a colored dodge, let's see, nope, overlay, add, let's have it as an add, this is just going to give us some more light to our character, uh, bring, it, bring some of that lightness back that we're, we're losing from some of the other filters, there we go, and then we can come over to F6. Now, I'm fairly happy with how these uh, filters are working. And I don't want to add too many because you can, again, like in Photoshop, burn the image or burn the model's um, textures by putting too many filters or too many matte caps on top of your, your character. So for the F6, I'm going to have a look at a different a pr uh, different approach so at the moment it's set to displace uh, we want to take it and put a sharpen on there and this is just going to sharpen and bring back that sharpness to the image a bit uh, we don't have to have too too high a sharpen just a little bit because we can still sharpen it back in Photoshop once we uh, export the composite composite uh, composite layer sorry um, Inside of F7, we can turn that one on and we can have this as a saturation. And we can just adjust the saturation, bring back some of that saturation and lower the opacity a bit. Bring some more of that color, that vibrant color back in into our model. And we go head over to F8 and we can put a hue on this one and it's quite quite a bit different now so we just want to play with the hue until we're we're happy with how it is so i am happy with how this model is looking at the moment um and it was very quick very very uh, very easy to understand how to to do this um it, it's, it's very handy to use if you are a concept artist and you don't have uh, access to um, a render engine such as Keyshot or uh, Maya or an Unreal Engine or Marmoset and you want to show off your model in a um, professional portfolio piece then you can use ZBrush to composite your image out and uh, you, um, use it as a uh, final piece in your portfolio, or, you know, uh, without having to worry too much about um, making it UV mapped, uh, textured uh, inside a substance, and then exported in, or imported into Unreal or Marmoset or, or, or Keyshot or any, any of those other programs. Uh, to render out your image in this this particular instance you can be a concept artist and buy ZBrush and only need to use ZBrush and Photoshop to create interesting looking characters and creatures. There are a, a few downsides to using uh, BPR filter. 
filters but I will get to that uh, a little later uh, right now I'm going to show you how to put a rim light and a specular light onto your character to give it a bit more um, inf uh, lighting information basically we're going to create this using uh, materials so uh, what I want to do is uh, a Mac app material so what I want to do is turn off the textures for our character by hitting shift and the paint bucket tool and the paint bucket uh, paint brush tool sorry you can turn off all the texture information on our character come over to the uh, material section and select uh, the toy plastic now we're going to adjust and and change the parameters of the toy plastic so i'm just going to move the material tab over to the right hand side and within here we're going to go to the modifier section and bring down the ambient and bring down the diffuse and that's going to take away all that color information on our material and then in the specular curve we just want to bring this curve out a bit so it's not too harsh a, a specular highlight you can even use the focal shift there we go so that's going to be our specular and what we can now do is move the light around the model until we find a decent enough um, specular highlight position for our material because once we make this material that material uh, that specular highlight on that material is going to be a fixed texture so you cannot uh, change it you, that's one of the downsides to using this method is that you cannot change the um, the specular highlight once you've created it you'd have to go back and change the um, position of the light then uh, change and then create a new texture for that material um, but I'll, I'll get to that in a minute so uh, what we'll do first is just move this light so it's in a more interesting position and it picks up some of those specular highlights that we want I'm going to go for this uh, grab the intensity up a bit put down the, the distance a bit so this is going to be our specular highlight material um, what we want to do then is go over to the modifiers and uh, create the map cap texture there we go so this is going to be the texture that's going to drive uh, the material that we're going to assign to it very complicated i know but bear with me um, so once we've done that we can come over to the material tab uh, which is over here uh, select the matte cap material and we want to make a copy of the matte cap material then we want to come over to the material tab and select one of the materials we won't be using in this uh, tutorial or you don't use often so for me that would be the colorized glow and then on top of the colorized glow inside the material tab we just want to paste that matte cap material so now that matte, that that glow is now replaced by our matte cap material and then what we want to do is just come down to the bottom and uh, click on the texture that is applied and click on the image which is our specular highlight now that material is driven is driving that texture so that material is now that texture but that does mean that it is a fixed image now on on that material if we wanted to change it we'd have to um, reposition the light and then uh, make another texture out of that and then replace the the mat this tech this this texture the matte cap texture with that texture to update it um, but we can now come down to here but now we, we are happy with this one for now for this purpose um, so we can now change this material back to a skin shader 
I'm going to show you what it looks like when we apply it to the filter. So we just bring the light back down to a uh, intensity down to an 8 0.8. Bring it to the front of the model where it was roughly. And then come down to F9 uh, filter in the BPL filters. Turn it on. Come over to the type of filter it is and select the material shader uh, in the modifiers just click on the override shadows and override mesh color and in the texture you'll see now that we have a matte cap gray just here select that in the subtool folder oh, in the subtool folder you just want to turn on the textures again and now when we hit the BPR filter uh, BPR render we'll see that this is apply this new specular highlight is applied to our model and we just need to fix it a little bit there you go see yes there's the specular highlight we created but it's not in the right it's not using the right blend mode so we can come over here and put it as a screen and then turn it down there we go now we have a specular highlight on our model and the advantage of this is now we can rotate this model to a different position and hit the BPR filter uh, BPR render sorry and that specular highlight is going to stay where we created it because it's a texture now instead of a material and it doesn't obey the the rules of the light now um, so that specular highlight will always be in that position and if you wanted to change it you'd have to go back and change it um, uh, like the way we created it so coming back here just hit the cluster one to get back to the render po uh, render view uh, I want to make a rim light using the same method so uh, come over here to the subtool texture a uh, subtool palette turn off the subtool textures by hitting shift and pressing the paint brush tool uh, and that will turn all of them off come back to the material turn down to the toy plastic which has still got the adjustments that we created on it so there's no diffuse and there's no ambient and the specular is different as well uh, come over to the light tab in the on the left here click on the light tab uh, to send the light to the back of the model and then uh, adjust the light position so you can get a rim light now it, it might look a little bit weird here but don't worry too much because the shadow should fix that um, later so we can bump this up now quite a bit because it's going to be our rim light and then once we're happy with the positioning of our rim light might just bring it up a bit you can even change the parameters in here some more until you're happy with the rim light there we go we need to create a duplicate uh, we need to create this into a texture sorry uh, matte cap texture so just come down to the bottom of the material modifiers and click on create matte cap texture that's going to put it right here store it right here we then want to come over to the top of the material tab select the matte cap material create a copy of that copy matte cap come over to the material tab and select one of these that you're not going to use so I'm going to just go with mm, double shaded for now and paste the matte cap there come all the way to the bottom and click on the texture tab and click on the image of the rim light that we just created and there we go that is now our rim light you can turn off the texture if you want 
And what we can do now is come back to the BPR filter, select the filter number 10 and turn it on. And in here, select um, material shading, or you could just copy this one. So we could just copy this filter and paste it and then just change the image to the rim light. And there's our rim light. So we just need to turn back on the uh, shaders. Ah, there we go. Turn the light down a bit. Position it. Take a little bit of distance on it. Uh, come over here to the subtool pack uh, palette and turn on the textures. Uh, once we're happy with that, just make sure our model hasn't moved and hit the BPR filter, a uh, BPR render. Come back over to the filters and just adjust the filter to your liking. You can even change it to a lighten. Turn this one, the specular one down a bit. You can see if I apply the shadows over the top of it, then it will apply it over the top. Uh, and we also have a few adjustments down here as well that you can play with. Uh, so you can add some the strength of the shadows. Strength, moderate the strength of the uh, SSS uh, edge detection, modulate the strength of color edge detection. And it just gives you different, different outcomes of your material. So let's say that's all we need. So, um, now we can move on to uh, the BPR render properties or the render properties. Um, turn on the ambient occlusion. Come down to the BPR for the AO of ambient occlusion and adjust the settings to resolution of 4000. And the rays, we'll just leave the rays at the same. Um, the blur down to one and the Z de uh, V depth to one. Nothing's happened, but if we quickly press the button, uh, the render button, uh, we will then get the ambient occlusion in there. So if we just come over to the render pass, you'll see now we have the ambient occlusion. We can also adjust the BPR fill, uh, shadows and just add a few more rays to it so it's not so jaggedy on the, um, the, on the shadows and it's a lot smoother. Um, and then we can also come over here, just have a look. No, nope, everything's fine. So once we hit the BPR render again, just wait for it to render out. There we are. And now, well, we, just one second. Just need to render it out in a different angle quick there we go so the reason why we adjust the render settings later on rather than uh, at the beginning is because if you play around too much with the BPR rays and the resolution and inside of the shadows and the ambient occlusion too much it can uh, it can force ZBrush to shut down or crash. So it's good to um, do this near the end of the uh, project rather than at the beginning. Um, in, in case ZBrush does crash on you, it's probably best to save out your BPR filters um, to a, onto your hard drive. Um, once you've done that, you can then load it back in on any model and you will have the setup for uh, for for that model 
and you can just come in here and just adjust these parameters um, uh, to whatever fits your model or, or makes it look good. That's, a, that's another good thing. It, it cuts down the, um, the, the workflow um, in about, for about 85%, so that's pretty good. Um, as well as um, cutting down the, the amount of time needed in Photoshop as well. Now, the bad, bad thing about, uh, well, not the bad thing, but the downside to rendering using BPR filters is that you don't have as much control as you would inside, inside of Photoshop with uh, exported matcap renders. So uh, you can, what I usually do is I render these out separately as their own color with no no shaders, no uh, no uh, shadows, no occlusion, any of that. And then I'll take it into Photoshop and I will um, composite it in Photoshop because I have more uh, accuracy with how I want the final result to look. Whereas inside here, when you use BPR filters, it's a little bit more difficult to um, to to get exactly what you want, like you would inside of Photoshop. Um, you still get a good render, and it speeds up your workflow eighty five percent. But you're limited at the moment with the with the program to uh, a few um, things uh, you probably find that this is good for creating a quick character sheet for getting different angles for your model so if you were um, working in let's say you were a concept artist or a modeler inside a film or game and you had just done a concept or you, you're you're working on a concept and you needed to show the client um, a front, a front or three-quarter view of your model, and you you render that out using the BPR filters. And you get you would get um, something that looks like this, and then say they said, "Oh, that looks good from that angle. Can we please see what it would look like from the other side?" Uh, now, if you were using the old the other method that I use inside of uh, my time-lapse videos um, you would have to do twice the amount of work because you'd have to re-export all those um, different mat caps and then composite them inside of Photoshop which can take a long time uh, to do uh, that sort of method is is purely to have a, a beautiful portfolio piece uh, portfolio, portfolio ready piece um, to show off to a client like this is the beauty pass of the model that we're going to have uh, whereas this method is going to be more um, about showing off a model from different angles and getting a good render on every angle of your character and then showing that to a client and then they can say yes or no uh, but you don't spend too much time on it you still come up with a good render and you know you could take this into uh, Photoshop and composite it further uh, the same way you would um, the other way but it's just a, a, little, a lot quicker um, but it has a few uh, downsides to it at the moment uh, I believe they're trying to um, work on it at ZBrush um, at Pixelogic sorry uh, they're trying to work on it so that it's more uh, user friendly in the concept concept way uh, in workflow but for now this is what we have and what we can do from here is render out a nice uh, tone table which then we can put into a portfolio uh, we don't have to go take it into Keyshot or take it into Maya to you know render it out in a tone table you can do that all within ZBrush so we're, that's what we're going to do now uh, the first thing you probably want to do is make sure your model is in the center of the world on inside of ZBrush. So you just want to come into the Z, blog, uh, Z plugin, uh, Scale Master, and center Subtools to World. 
click that button and just wait for it to uh, do its thing. It's just moving all the sub tools into the middle of the world. Um, there we go. Uh, so that when you when the camera rotates on it, it's not going to do something weird like rotate around around the this axis and it's rotating. Well, you know, silly. Um, what you can do is uh, we can clear this now, clear this view or clear all, reposition the model now that it's centered, um, save that view just in case we want to come back to it later. Um, and then in the movie tab, we can just dock this onto the side. So in the movie tab, we want to do document and large. This is just going to uh, render the documents area. And I've created my document to be uh, 1920 by 1080. Um, and in the modifiers, we can set the recording frames per second to 60 and the playback to 24. Scroll down, turn the cursor size off. That's the this little red icon red icon and you don't want that inside your movie when you're rendering um, come down to the timeline and the duration i usually put it to 120 that should be fine um, in the overlay image you don't want the overlay image uh, so you just turn your opacity down and the title image you don't want to fade in and you don't want to fade out with the zbrush uh, logo so once you've done that, what you want to do is uh, press the BPR render, wait for it to render. And then what you can do is uh, click on the turntable, record turntable. Now, when you do this, it's going to start rendering and continuously render the model out as it turns the, the model so you can go ahead and click that button go make a cup of tea or do something else and just wait for it to finish off uh, we will return once it's done and i will show you how the turntable looks so um i'll be back soon Welcome back to this tutorial. Uh, the turntable is now rendered and I'm just going to show you how it looks. Um, so come over to the movie tab or the docked movie tab over there on the left um, and we can just press play and there you go. This is how it would look when we use the filters inside of ZBrush. It's a quick way of making a good looking turntable of your model um, to show off to a client as a work in progress or a concept piece. Um, and what you can do then is uh, export the model, uh, the movie, uh, uh, highest. Uh, just make sure you click on the little H tab to export at highest quality, and then you can export the movie. Another thing to, to, to bear in mind is that you can now use the uh, BPR filters um, that you've set up and use them on uh, different models of, of in your in your um, backlog. So uh, I've just uploaded another model that I created with ZBrush, and we're just going to. With using the same BPR filters that we created for the dragon, we are now going to render this model out and see how it looks uh, with those BPR filters. And there you go. So you can see there would be some adjustments needed for these filters. Uh, I would come in here and maybe add some more wetness or take away some wetness um, in the uh, 
saturation bring the saturation up or down and the hue change the hue as well anything you can now change anything in this in these parameters to suit your need you can add some more specular on this guy and then in here we can add some more of this color add more opacity on this one or we'll lower the opacity bring down the uh, cavity map if you wanted and then you could do the same thing you could render him out in a turn table just uh, remember to always uh, center your sub tools to the world before making a turntable otherwise it can the camera can rotate around the model in the, uh, the wrong uh, way uh, got, jumping back to the dragon quickly now uh, we have just changed a few of the parameters in the filter the you know, bpr filters but that shouldn't be what shouldn't be too much of an issue uh, so another reason you would like you would find this useful to um, uh, use bpr filters um, is because you can now render at different angles and take it into Photoshop and do some compositing over the top, uh, you know, paintbrush work over the top, but having at least a base meth, a baseline for your, um, your creation. So you don't have to, uh, waste so much time, uh, fiddling about with layers and, um, re-exporting them from zbrush re-exporting different matte caps from zbrush all the time you can just plug it all into the bpr filter as m as many as 12 and then uh, export the render so if you were to do that you'd have to come over to the bpr render pass and instead of selecting the shaded depth shadow and uh and am ambient occlusion you would just select the composited one because the composited one is everything that you see on the screen here is in the composited rendered image not in the shaded uh, so once you click on the composited one you can export that and i would also suggest exporting the mask in case you can't delete the background uh, or mask out the background uh, it's good to have the mask with it um, but yeah uh, th that's what i would do uh, and then take that into Photoshop and adjust it in Photoshop later. Uh, this has been a very quick overview of how to use BPR filters. Uh, I will uh, be making another tutorial in the near future on how to use BPR filters as well as um, how to composite with those BPR filters later on in Photoshop. I just wanted to show you this new method um, which you can use uh, to create uh, the layer uh, the, the layer style um, that you would do in Photoshop but inside a ZBrush instead. Uh, it's very um, handy to use uh, to go and watch my tutorials on my YouTube channel on how to composite in Photoshop so that you can get an idea of how those layers work and all those layers uh, are basically matte caps that I have here um, rendered out and once you know how to use them in Photoshop then you will be able to uh, transfer that knowledge onto the BPR filter um, filters and work much quicker and understand how the, the materials work together the mat caps work together so i thank you for your um patience <laughs> and uh if you'd like to leave a like uh share and subscribe to my channel it would really help uh i try to get as get out as many tutorials as i can um but it is difficult to do so because uh, i work full time I uh, if this makes if this gets seen a lot or is popular I will definitely make another tutorial uh, on how to use BPR filters uh, in the future um, I want to thank 
Pixelogic uh, ZBrush for showing me this method of uh, rendering using BPR filters. And um, thank you guys for taking the time to watch this video. Um, so yeah, have a good day. Thank you.